pleaser. The crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar. The crowd pleaser. We gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believe us. Hey girl, had a long day, you tired from work Throw me some dollars and I remove my shirt You can touch me too, these are the perks Free yourself, lose your mind and go berserk Uh-huh, and go berserk, uh-huh, and go berserk, uh-huh, and go berserk Make way for the bad guy What is up everyone and welcome to another episode of Crowd Pleaser, the podcast That brings you the inside scoop on what it takes to be a male entertainer in today's world I'm your host, Caesar the Crowd Pleaser and I'm going to have two special guests on with me today that we're going to be interviewing in a moment to get a different perspective on this male entertainer lifestyle and career. But as usual, I want to take a moment to thank my patrons on patreon.com backslash crowd pleaser. Uh, this show is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for contributing. Uh, it takes time and effort and brain power and equipment to make this podcast as well as the other things I do on my social media happen. So I really appreciate you taking the time to give back. We, If you join the Patreon, you can join for as little as a dollar a month, all the way up to as much as you want for a show. And you get all kinds of neat perks, like being able to discuss different topics I use for future episodes, as well as giveaways, see videos of the podcast, and behind-the-scenes footage of me creating various acts and whatnot. So once again, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Next, I want to mention LaBear Dallas. This is our home office where we operate five nights a week, Wednesday to Sunday. All right, we put a great show all night long as soon as, as, soon as doors open, all the way till close. Bachelorette party, birthday party, retirement party, divorce party, you name it, we are the best place for it. So come out, put your girl up on stage, embarrass her a little bit, have a great time and make all kinds of great memories. All right, so let me, without further ado, introduce my two guest speakers today. First up is going to be Logan from Bedford, Texas. How you doing, Logan? I'm doing pretty good, Caesar. Awesome, man. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Next from Keller, Texas is going to be Zach. What's up, Zach? What's up, everyone? What's up, Caesar? Well, today's show is going to be a little bit different than norm. Uh, typically, we've been hitting guys that are more experienced in the business, but today we're actually going to be interviewing two of our more uh, new recruits or rookies, as have you. And they both have been, I believe, under, under, definitely under a year and probably close to under six months of dancing, correct? I think right. I just hit over six months. Oh, right on. I'm at maybe three. Yeah, so yeah. time definitely goes by fast. So what this is going to do is we're going to see kind of like what your initial views are as you decide to become a male entertainer, some of the trials and tribulations you face and stuff like that. So just to go ahead and get as much content as possible, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, Logan, how long have you been dancing and what got you into dancing? The first time I actually uh, ever danced was uh, the first amateur night I ever did. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, dead serious. Uh, the way I found out about it was um, I just got out of an engagement, so some time had <clears> passed <throat> and I got on Tinder. This uh, girl I met actually ended up showing me the LeVert documentary. Okay. So whenever I switched uh, locations for my job, I had a Thursday off. So I came and tried out, and I just, uh, I like the feeling. No kidding. So the first time you ever tried on dance shoes was at LaVere for Amateur Night. Was at LaVere for Amateur Night. Wow. Did you take, did you win that night? Uh, no, I always place top three, but didn't win that night. Got you, got you. All right, well, we have some ringers that show up week after week to kind of take it down. So I totally understand that. And that was it, huh? So after you did Amateur Night that first time, you liked the rush of the stage, you decided this is something you want to do? I did like the feeling it gave me. It kind of like gave me that rock star feeling to where, you know, you, you feel on top of things. It's a really good rush. Right on, right on. Yeah, and you tend to lean more towards rock and roll regardless of your preference, correct? Yeah, it's just yeah. something I kind of feel I can move with. Right on, right on. So, Zach, all right, so you just said you hit just about three months, but yeah. I feel like you've had a little bit of dancing experience beforehand. Uh, can you shine a little light on that? <laughs> I've actually never danced other than at LaBear. I only really? danced one time, and that was for a talent show in front of my entire school. Okay. It was this thing called Man of the Year. They picked 12 guys for each month of the year. I was October. And then um, we had to put on a talent show at the end of the year. I was like, I don't have a talent. So I stripped in front of my entire school. No kidding. Yeah. Jeez, man. You back, guys are like naturals at this. Back when, like, Sexy and I know it was popular, that's what I yeah. stripped down to. And yeah. That's that's yeah. that's pretty gutsy, man, in front oh, of your yeah. entire school. All, all the te and my mom, grandma, and aunt were in the front row. Yeah. And at the end of it, all the teachers and everyone was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> did, she, 
Did anyone know what you were doing, what you were going to do, or you just kind of kept it under wraps at the last well, minute? Well, like, we all went out there, and I had a group of guys, and we all had on, like, real little black shorts. Mine were, I made tearaways out of them, but with clothespins. And so no, okay. one, no yeah. one knew this, but I had, like, little tiny gold shorts under those, almost like a Speedo, and I ripped the black ones and threw them. And then danced in those, and the entire crowd just went crazy. Oh, I can imagine. That was actually good thinking on your behalf, man. Way to, way to MacGyver it. Yeah. <laughs> and did you know anything about LeBay or anything like that? Or Magic Mike when this went down? I had heard about it before, but uh, I think Magic Mike came out, like, right when I was a senior, maybe. So, wow. I, not maybe after. Yeah. That's a really good story, actually. It's pretty impressive, man. I don't think I would have had the courage to do that way back when. Hell, sometimes I don't have the courage now. Uh, so, what got you into dancing, then? So fast forward a couple of years later, right? Okay. I, I mean, I've always loved music, uh, and I've always had a feel for music. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess the only other time I have danced is just joking around at parties, you know, just dancing yeah. around. And, like, I'd give girls lap dances at parties, and they loved it. What kind of, like, where did all this come from, dude? <laughs> like, until I got to La I never had any kind of experience with this. Meanwhile, you're stripping on stage and giving <laughs> girls lap dances while stepping foot into a strip club. What? The, yeah. Like, I, I just, I don't know. It just happened. And then um, the way I actually ended up coming up here is I lost a job. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, my mom used to come here back in the day when it was real popular okay. and, with, with her mom. And she was like, you should go check out LaBear. And I, when I came up here, I didn't even plan on dancing. But then after I did amateur night, I had a couple of the veterans come up to me that night and say, dude, you're, you're pretty badass. You know? Yeah. And so, but you end up becoming a, a server, correct? Yeah, I was a waiter for well, like a year. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe you've been here that long already. That's insane. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so to kind of capitalize or move further on that, in the, in the year that you spent uh, being a, a waiter, what, what all do you think you learned by just serving and like not being on stage yet? You, you learn the feel for the club and you like... You learn how to not step on toes mm -hmm. is the main thing. You you watch the guys on stage and see their moves, and you can you can kind of feel off of that, and you see the acts, and if you pick up quick, you can already kind of know how to do them. Okay. And uh, you learn how to talk to women a little better. You just yeah, because you're automatically going to their table, which the dancers can't do, but as a server, you have to. Yeah. Um. Do you feel like being able to experience the show without being a part of it for X amount of time, in your case a year, gave you a leg up to where you kind of knew more or less what you wanted to do or what you had to do when you started, when you made the switch over to being a full-time dancer? I think so because most of the girls here already knew me and mm -hmm. they knew me from doing amateur nights and everyone here has wanted me to dance. The girls, a lot of the guys, the veterans, they wanted me to dance um, and I won my fair share of amateur nights. Yeah, I can imagine a year's worth, right? Roughly. Probably about 50 or something. It's just about lines. every week. Yeah, and then finally made the jump up. And did you, did you see any, were you more popular when you started dancing than you anticipated? No. Or was but, it about but, par? But I was thought? told by uh, some of the guys in the back, they told me, they were like, you'll see, you know, a lot of the girls who like you now or liked you as a waiter, they're not going to come up and tip you. Like, it won't, not all of them will come up. Maybe at first, but. Yeah, so they kind of, so luckily everyone kind of passed off the wisdom to you. So you, you had yeah. a pretty good understanding of what was going on before you ever got blindsided and stuff like that. So yeah. you had time to prep. Now, to go back to you, Logan, you actually just showed up and you never spent any time as a waiter or a shot guy or anything, correct? No, I went through the same ringer he did. I went through, um, did amateur night for a while before I actually got hired on as a waiter. Um, the first time I got hired on was right after Tom left because uh, Alex actually got to see me dance. Okay. So apparently he liked me enough. He offered me the job. I did that for a while and then we had one night where I actually ended up having to carry this girl out who had had a little bit too much to drink. Mm -hmm. So I actually got some vomit on my shirt. Okay, that's so, not uncommon. It, no, it's not, but <laughs> I had to take it off, and I was like, Alex, do you have another shirt? Because I tried doing shot guy before, but he wasn't fond of uh, me having all the tattoos. Okay. Which people have their differences, and well, anyways, he ends up letting me wait uh, tables the rest of the night shirtless. 
I didn't have any tables the rest of the night, but he got enough compliments on me to where he actually made me a shot guy. Okay, yeah. And then from That's the there, next step. That's typically a standard transition from server to shot guy just because, mm -hmm. like you said, you go from no shirt or from a shirt to no shirt, and then eventually you go to no pants as well. <laughs> so, uh, and how long was that whole transition for you? Um, I think I went to shot guy probably within about a month or two, and then after that, it was about another month of uh, doing like side stages and shot guy and then I think I finally got to dance. Okay, and so with you, you actually, <coughs> excuse me, so you became a dancer, but you still didn't have an act, so they didn't put you on main stage, correct? And um, you were just working side stages? I was uh, doing side stages at first, but Dean would let me use uh, Bad to the Bone, so that's what I would go with, or we'd switch off and I'd do Sharp Dressed Man. Okay. So after that, and then eventually, whenever Dean left, kind of when I made the transition to full time, because I had that uh, main act. Yeah, uh, and, Greece. and since you, your transition was so quick when you started dancing, like how hard was that? Let's say first month for you, as far as like generating income. Income wasn't as hard. I I feel like I got lucky with that. I had like a good start, but it you know it has that roller coaster effect. You'll have a good month. You'll have a bad month. The income wasn't as hard as it was just kind of trying to get used to using the stage and getting that like that confidence. Okay. Because like you said, it went very fast, so I just kind of felt like I was thrown in there. Mm -hmm. At the same time, as what I was chasing after. Yeah, so you were slightly lost on main stage trying to figure out how to eat up time? <laughs> uh, for the fact I couldn't, I couldn't dance, yeah, I was trying to figure out some dance moves and just kind of like uh, testing things out, trying to get my feel. Yeah. I do remember there's one move that you were trying out for a little while for I think a week and I believe every time you did it all the guys cringed and we were all telling you like dude stop doing that you're gonna kill yourself <laughs> yeah uh, I, I, and luckily you did stop doing it because I mean if we could hear it with the music playing you're probably doing it wrong so good on you thank you, you. have a little bit of longevity and health now um, so without getting into actual specific like numbers and stuff like that do you feel at six months like has your money stabilize somewhat or do you feel like it still fluctuates in that roller coaster quite a bit for the majority of it I feel it still fluctuates and okay and so I guess you're still striving to, to improve on that as well as the, the the ceiling correct I feel like that yeah that would be correct just because I'm trying to like still figure out like who I am as a person here and then for that to like eventually like find people that like me as me yeah yeah um and so what was your first impression, if you remember, which, I mean, you may or may not. I know I, at this point I really don't. But do you remember when you got your first uh, VIP dance? The first one? Yeah, I actually do. I remember uh, Robin actually uh, got me the dance, and then the chick actually liked me for my uh, tattoos and music choice, so we actually like kind of had a lot of uh, good things to talk about. Sweet. So that was pretty exciting for you then? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, was kind of like a surprise. I was like, oh, I feel kind of special. Right on, right on, man. Uh, so Zach, how about you? Like, how do you feel? You said you're at three months dancing now. Yeah. And uh, are you still riding that kind of financial roller coaster? Oh yeah, because as a waiter, you know, I had I had my core regulars. I yeah. had I and I knew how to wait tables right. I knew how to make money no matter what, mm -hmm. even on slow nights. And my money has gone down just because I made the switch. But mm -hmm. it's what I've wanted to do. Yeah, I, oh, clearly. I, I didn't en I didn't enjoy waiting tables. I, I was good at it, but I didn't enjoy it because yeah. the, the whole time I was looking up on stage like that's what I want to do. Understandable. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. Trust <laughs> me, I felt the same way when I was serving. Like, it wasn't one of those things where I came in that I wanted to dance. In fact, I, I didn't want to at all, but yeah. I didn't like serving. It, it was way too much of an asshole and just mm -hmm. seeing what the guys were doing on stage. Like, I figured out if I was going to work in this club, like, I would rather be on stage than on the floor. Yeah. So, with that being said, what is your favorite part of dancing so far? Honestly, it's just the entertainment standpoint and the uh, creative freedom. And pretty much just going out there and doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. and I like energy and I like seeing the reaction of the crowd. Okay. Like when you pack that stage, it's a great feeling like you're like all these girls right here are into me or into what I'm doing gotcha and that's probably my favorite part about it right on yeah there's definitely a stage rush too I mean, like you said when you do something you hear the crowd roar or you have a packed stage and I'm almost cheering for you it definitely kind of elevates you to a, a higher state of consciousness and it, it, it's it's rewarding it's very rewarding uh, 
sadly, we're going through our winter part now where the club isn't going to see the same numbers it normally does. So you're going to kind of struggle a little bit to get that reaction. But it's still there. And yeah. if anything, it just tempers you, you know, through the fire. So once spring comes in, it'll pick back up again. And that's kind of similar to what you liked about the job, right, Logan, as far as just being on stage and being able to kind of influence the crowd and stuff, right? Would you say that's your favorite thing about the business, or is it something else? I would I would definitely agree with him on that. The creative freedom is by far, like, the best part because you can pretty much make an act about whatever you want. At the same time, you know, you get to appeal to women, and that's, what, that's how you make your living. That's the best part. You get to go out there. You get to be a rock star. You get to, you get to live it up. Yep. And uh, so neither of you had any issues being the center of attention then. I mean, obviously you didn't, Zach, because you were already taking your clothes off in high school. But uh, what, Logan, no, like the, being the center of attention plays no role, no effect on you negatively at all? No, I, I was pretty much the center of attention. I was always the very social like child whenever I was younger. Like My mom didn't like me talking to a lot of people, but she'd always look over. I'd be starting up a conversation, and that just kind of followed through throughout high school. Lily would just go around making everyone laugh, have a good time. Just full of shenanigans. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, this job definitely caters to that. So let's flip the coin around, and what is your least favorite aspect of the business so far? Least favorite? Uh, that'd definitely be uh, whenever you have a bad stage. That's just like the worst feeling. You know, you feel like you didn't do well. You felt like you let it down. You didn't bring the energy, and it just kind of like it, it floats with you for a bit. Yeah, so for our listeners that haven't, maybe have not been to the club yet, what would you call a bad stage? Like, what aspects do you reference when you think of a bad stage? Um, you end up being offbeat or, you know, like, uh, you mess up a move, just the girls aren't feeling your kind of music, you know, you just, the energy doesn't flow right, and it just kind of lets you down a little. Okay, I can understand that. So it doesn't necessarily mean too much about how the women are reacting to you, but rather how you feel you're handling the stage. It's a bit of both because you want a good reaction because if you know you feel you're having fun, they're having fun, everyone's having a good time. But if you don't feel like you know you're pumping them up, it just kind of makes you feel let down because you, you're here to make sure everyone has a good time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. How about you, Zach? I'd agree with him on having a bad stage, but also on another side of it, the worst part would be you know relationship-wise. It's real hard if, like, if you're trying to get in a relationship or you're trying to keep one or if girls in here who act interested in you for certain things, but they're not. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. It's, it just takes an emotional tax on you? Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. And I can imagine, like, you still being kind of early in it. Like, it takes time for you to figure out how you want to handle it and how you are you emotionally can and use the brain power essentially to take on like con because eventually I'll, I'll tell you guys right now like after about a year or two there's never going to be a first time for anything anymore at yeah. that point you're going to be like oh yeah you're the third girl this week that has done that yeah you know and so it, it, it you figure out how you want to handle things yeah. you know case in point uh I, I don't think either of you have had a woman come up to you trying to kind of downplay who you are to make themselves feel better yet have you I've had you, it. you have okay so tell me a little bit about that experience she came up basically saying like, oh, why did you want to do this job? Like, are you like, are you comfortable with yourself? You know, do you wish you did something else? Kind of like trying to belittle me. And I was just like, no, I like it. You know, like I get to pick my music. I get to have fun. I get to entertain. It's what I like. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, did you never want to go to college? I was like, no, I'd rather go military. So I did that and then ended up coming here. You know? Good on you. Yeah, right on. And luckily it didn't, apparently it didn't mess up with your night at all. Did no, it? I mean. She, Good. Well, I mean, fair warning that you're gonna get those. I like they're it. they're they're a dime a dozen. <laughs> uh, Zach, have you had any any kind of interactions like that yet? I don't think so. Okay. Not, not that I can remember. Yeah, it's it's not it's not common, but it's not super rare either. So you'll you'll come across it. Three months is 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 not that much of experience yet. As well as like I told you, like being in the winter, you're not yeah. gonna see the fluctuation of numbers through the doors that you will see in the summertime, which you already know being a server. Yeah. <laughs> So that's not bad, man. You guys have kind of kept a pretty positive attitude. I got to say, like, hopefully that's that's the worst things you guys have to deal with while you're here. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. It gives and, it ebbs and flows, that's for sure. So we recently, I believe uh, less than two weeks ago, we had our international dance-off, which is the biggest event that we have in the year. Guys come in from out of town to compete with their best acts. People come with new acts. And we compete for cash prizes to be named the you know best dancer around. Uh, this was the first event dancing for both of you, correct? Yep. 
No, I was in the Sexiest Man too. Oh, that's right. Six months. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. That one was really fresh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead and touch on you for a minute then. So this being your second event, like how did you feel about it and how did you approach it? Uh, I approached it a little differently because I kind of had an idea what they might expect. They're going to want me to move around the stage a little bit more. You know, it helps that I have more to take off too. So the way I went into it is... I kind of had an act I was working on at the time, and I decided to, you know, touch core to it to make it appeal to this. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd come a little bit more prepared this time. Okay, and this was the first time you've a created an act and b elaborated on an act, yes. correct? <laughs> also, how was that development process for you? Um, I ended up hearing about this movie, and I was just so fond of it because, like you said, you know, I'm into the rock, but they had it to where it, it touched base on just basically how rock and roll came up, you know, like suggesting like the darker side of it. So I saw the movie and I liked it. And I thought, you know, like this might appeal to some people, you know, girls do like rock stars. So make a rock act kind of, you get to have fun with it. It entertains. It does all the aspects of it. Okay. And then how did the strip off go for you? Not as well as I wanted. It happens to the best of us. Like I told you my first strip off, I ended up being first and I completely bombed. Like yeah. you just take it with a grain of salt. You, you learn from it and you move that's on. That's the main thing is that you learn from it. I kind of learned what I got to change up and what I got to add to it. Uh, how was the event for you, like, popularity-wise? Were you busy all night? Did you, I mean, the club was packed, and to me, it felt like we had phenomenal energy through the crowd. Did you kind of feel that? Were you kind of riding oh, the Oh, I felt the night? energy. I felt everyone brought a great act. Like, Le Bear was the place to be that night, for sure. I don't really remember much having uh, free time at all. So for the most part, it was a really good night. Which is exactly how we want our nights to go. Yeah. Like it's 10 o'clock one minute and then one fifty the next. Right on, man. Right on. Are you planning on kind of putting forth your best foot for, or putting forth maximum effort again for the Sexiest Man next year? Or do you oh, definitely. Right on. Sweet, man. I'm glad to hear it. Zach, so this was for sure your first major event as a dancer. Yep. Uh, how, what was your take on it? Uh, I liked it. <clears throat> I liked having uh, a lot of women in here to to pack the stage mm -hmm. you know because um, we have had slow nights but I like when when there's a big crowd and I like to get as many of them up as I can uh, I would have loved to I was working on making an act but I didn't have it ready um, but I I wanted to put that forward but I couldn't I didn't have enough time to get it set up that's the only thing that I wish I did differently I didn't do as bad as I thought in the strip off I would have loved to do better but yeah I think we all would always like to but at the end of the day too sometimes it's not necessarily all about what the judges think like as long as the crowd liked you and you're getting dances and oh, yeah. people are tipping you then it ends up being a, a pretty good night regardless and you kind of have to take all aspects of it together yeah. it, it is a competition but it's also still an open event night and even if your stage isn't what you want it to be if you get on side stage and you have a line all yeah. night you're doing something right yeah uh so since you said you couldn't put an act together for this strip off uh, the sexiest man uh we have dance wars prior to that where we go up against florida but that's more of like a group and club versus club thing yeah. the next individual one is going to be the sexiest man next summer uh do you feel like you're going to try to put something together for that oh yeah definitely sweet man Glad to hear it. Uh, what did you learn? Did you learn anything from this event that you really want to try to work on for future? Uh, I kind of heard uh, some of the what some of the judges' scores were on me, mm -hmm. and I know what I need to work on. Yeah, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I do it every event. I check my scores, and I don't worry about anyone else's, and I look for patterns. I understand there's gonna be some bias in there, but if you're constantly scoring low low in choreography or overall body or sex appeal then those those are the things you you understand like okay this is i'm deficient at this i need to improve on that so yeah. it's good good on you and that's exactly what i don't know we the could scores see your scores hmm? i don't know we could see our scores i thought we could only know like what we place it was hearsay yeah okay so um it's just something I've been doing forever. Like, I th literally think I'm the only person that does it. Occasionally, if someone feels like they might have gotten cheated on the scores, they might ask for them. But, yeah. um, and, and that's why they're kind of always hesitant about it, because they rather avoid awkward politics and things like that. Like, that's why. But everyone understands that I'm pretty biased. Like, I don't really care yeah. who beat me or who <laughs> didn't. All I know is what my scores were. So they give me benefits. That being said, though, I have had trouble seeing my scores in other clubs. So... 
It, it is what it is. But yeah, I believe you can always see your scores, at least here, if you're interested in it. Uh, I wouldn't broadcast them or anything just to not, you know, pose yeah. issues in public. But uh, you can always check on them out and see. Now, if, if not, there's always, I wouldn't see Harmon trying to stop the judges at some point. You know, and be like, hey, if I can get, you know, a quick feedback on what you thought my show was. Yeah. Typically, they take a couple of breaks throughout the night, and I'm sure they wouldn't be in a bad position to, like, give you at least two minutes of feedback. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Great. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. It really was a good strip off for us uh, in general. Uh, it was an improvement on last year's, uh, only because we were had some scheduling. You guys, you were here for it. You were not. But we ended up doing it the day before Thanksgiving, so that kind of hurt attendance a little bit. Oh. Uh, but hey, you tried, you learned from your mistakes, you moved on. So lastly, everyone kind of being a male entertainer, stripper, dancer, you, you're you self-motivated. There, There's a certain standard that we want everyone to perform at, but really the sky's the limit and it's up to you. So your goal could be to survive, your goal could be to buy your own club. So somewhere in between those two extremes, you guys typically can pick what your goals are and they can change you know obviously you guys being very early in the game don't quite know everything and so as you progress your goals can change uh, even outside the club you might right now want to go to school or go in the army and then after a year here might find out that hey i wouldn't mind running a bar and so your goals change so going back to you logan what uh at the moment are your goals uh, long term Long term, it's to constantly improve while I'm here, just to try and work my way to a top entertainer, because I feel like that'd be very like motivating at the same point. But my main goal is to save up enough money to where I can like flip and renovate houses and start my own business. Okay, okay. So pretty much using this club as a, as a stepping stone to generate your capital. That way, you're able to invest. Yeah. And slowly grow. That's that's awesome. And there's a couple of guys that are in real estate here, so you definitely can have feed on that wisdom. And help you along so that's good that's awesome man uh, do you have kind of like a time frame in mind uh, time frame I'd like to be somewhere near the top within like five years I'd like to be also doing like renovations at that point I wouldn't say owning my own business but at least like running like renovations or at least learning more of the process yeah so at that point in ten years I definitely do want to be able to at least purchase my own business and start it yeah well that's pretty impressive man because I'll be honest with you uh, Typically, a year is the make or break point for people. People will go six months, they kind of, they'll stick around for a little bit. If they can make it a year, then they'll go the long term. And five years is a long time to be a stripper. Like, yeah. take it from me, I've done it. And like, the time goes by, but it put it this way the years fly by, but the weeks go by slow, you know? Yeah. So, how about you, Zach? What do you got for us in the future? I would love to see just how good I could be here, how, how far up I can go. Mm -hmm. And also in the future, I'd love to own some some businesses. I'd love to be a business owner. And uh, do you have any specific kinds of businesses in mind, or just in general, you corporate? It's just, uh, one was maybe a dance studio. I heard of someone else doing that, and it sounded like a pretty awesome idea. Yeah. And I already know some people who would love to teach there. So Which is, once again, quite <laughs> impressive considering that you never danced before. Yeah. <laughs> so... There, there goes the evolution of, of your persona as you dive into new things and aspects of life. That's uh, it's pretty impressive, pretty recommendable. So, I mean, I guess, like you said, one step at a time. Like right now, just improve your income, improve your show quality. And then that, start, that starts to reach the goal that you're looking at. Then you could start investing and looking outside the club. <coughs> That's awesome, guys. I, uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to come on the show and give everyone a little bit of insight on what you guys... Uh, you know, it's kind of your point of view as a new guy because it's been a long time since I was a rookie, even though I'm still learning. I, I, I've i never walked through those doors and not learned something. So hopefully you guys continue to do that throughout your career here as well. And, you know, ask me any questions you got. I don't know the way, but I know various <laughs> ways of doing things or a way of doing things. So uh, with that, I like to end the show with your worst and best events of the week. And all what this is is you guys will come across it plenty of times. Women... When they meet you outside the club, they're going to be like, oh, my God, is it so crazy? Like, what happens? And so we kind of just give them that here on the podcast. So we'll start with the worst events, and I'll give you guys time to put something together real quick since you're both giving me awkward blank stares. Oh, I've got, <laughs> I've then, got mine. Uh, all right, so mine, 
there's two. This one, the first one's kind of like a neutral one. I think it's both good and bad. Bad for her and good for me, but I'll throw it in the, the worst uh, category. And so a couple of weeks ago, I ended up going paintballing for a friend's birthday. And during the intro safety video, they made it clear that they were a Christian establishment, which is cool, like right on. Uh, I, I, I was raised both Christian and Catholic, so uh, no big deal there. As I was leaving, or during the day, I got context clues that the owner was a female. And so I was leaving and there was a more mature woman walking, walking by and she was just being polite and stopped me. I was like, oh, you're leaving already. Like, it, you know, why, why are you leaving so early? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's getting late. I got to go. And she's like, well, you know, you look like the kind of guy they'll, they'll stay out till the sun goes down. And I'm already like, I already kind of <laughs> figured who she was considering that she was dressed really nice and the only person that didn't have paint all over her. So I was like, look. I'm trying to give her a chance and like bypass it. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, sun goes down is when I gotta go to work, so I gotta go. <laughs> and then she just couldn't stop herself, so she's like, hey, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh god, I'm like, this is not gonna work out well. So I gave her one more pass. I'm like, oh, I'm a performer, entertainer, and she just couldn't let go. She's like, oh, what? And I'm like, oh <laughs> gosh, darn it, woman. So I was like, I'm a stripper. And mind you, I kept walking. She was walking one way, I was walking the other. So at this point, we probably had about a good 50 feet between us. And I just yelled, like, I'm a stripper. And like, <laughs> she literally was like, oh, eyes wide, turned right around and power walked away. Didn't say a other word to me. And uh, then as she was walking away, I was like, have a good night. And she still didn't say anything. I thought it was hilarious. Um, you know, I just gave her warning. She just didn't want to take it. Um, so that was the, the, the kind of neutral one. This one I really do think is, is one of the awkward things that we come across. And really, it stood out to me. Like, it didn't ruin my night by no means, but it definitely made me question women sometimes. And so there was a group of women that came in from out of town. And they were from, I won't say the place in case they're listening. So they were from out of town. And uh, <laughs> the... Uh, so two of them, the bachelorette and another girl come up to me and they tip me on side stage and they're having a good old time. We're talking, things are fine. And then a third girl walks up and we'll, we'll just say girl C. So girl A is the bachelorette, girl C is, is, this, is the perpetrator. And uh, <laughs> she walks up, no money in her hand and literally with this like not happy face. I don't know what face it is. I don't know if it's resting, <laughs> you know, B face or what, but it was not a happy face. It's like, what's up with this? And she pointed at my underwear. And I was like, I, I'm like, I looked at her, I was what, like, that's furry? Like, what are you, what are you asking me? <laughs> and she's like, the underwear. I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. Like, what, what are you asking me? I'm, I'm not following the question. Can you be a little more specific? And she's like, why are you wearing any, or why are you, why are you not naked or something like that? I'm like, cause we don't get naked here. Yeah. And she's like, well, why not? I'm like, I don't know if you've noticed, but we dance. Like, no one wants to see our stuff just flopping around. Yeah. And she's like, well, where, you know, X, where we're from, like, they're naked there. I'm like, well, that's why I'm dancing in Dallas. Like, <laughs> and uh, she said one other thing I don't remember, but it was, I'm like, I'm like, just tell me what you want me to tell you, and I will. So that was, she walks off, the other two girls kind of give me an eye roll, and they have a good time, and they sit down. Later on, girl A, bachelorette, gets wants to dance so i go and grab her and i walk over to the edge because they're sitting in the pit i don't like doing dances in the pit like it's just awkward yeah. in the way so i go to pull her to the side and girl c follow us over there cool no big deal it's not an issue and i'm dancing on her and then girl c is like purposely like watching everything we do <laughs> right <laughs> and mind you, I'm already known as one of the more conservative people in the club. So I'm just like, okay. And she makes it a point to lean over and be like, wow, that is such an expensive engagement ring. He must really love her. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that, that, that's great. Like, awesome. And she like sticks around for a little bit. And then, you know, bride kind of eye rolls again or whatever. Mind you, nothing's going on at all in the slightest bit. She's like, she's just laughing the whole time. She walks, so girl C walks away. She comes back again and like is checking on everything. I was like, I don't know what you think is going to go on. I mean, for crying out loud, she's wearing jeans and like a normal top. But I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Like to each their own. And she gives me one more last evil look and then leaves. Cool. That's it. Finally, after all that, I finish the dance. Uh, I go back up on stage. I gave the bachelorette a poster. I get off stage again and I swim by the table because they're from out of town. I want to make sure they're having a good time. I'm like, hey, you know, this and that. And girl B is like, oh, man, I would like a poster. 
I'm like, yeah, no problem. I can go get you guys some. I look at the other two girls, girl C and girl D. Hey, would you guys like posters too since I'm going to go back there and get you some? And girl C looks at me and she's like, I can't have a poster. I love my husband. And I was like, <laughs> you literally, like an hour ago, wanted to see every naked dude in here. Or every dude in here naked. Yeah. But you can't get a poster because you love your husband. I was just like, face palm. I'm like, I'll get the rest of y'all posters. I'll be back. Have a good night. Like, I, it just amazed me. And hopefully my listeners are agreeing with me. Maybe if it makes sense to them, then I feel totally bad about it. But... Like, I was just like, I don't know what was her case, but she clearly did not need to be here. Yeah. So, but yeah, that last statement kind of threw, like, I really, I went to the back and kind of vented to the guys. I was like, come here. You guys need to listen to this to make <laughs> sure I'm not overthinking this. And they were all both like, yeah, no, that sounds really weird. I was like, okay, cool. Just checking. <laughs> so those were my two worst events uh, of the week. A uh, bit long-winded, but such is life. Zach, what do you got for us? Um, worst event would probably be, you know, we only had one day off this week for Thanksgiving and uh, my mom she went out of town to Nebraska and she had a whole week off and I was I was wanting to go you know and visit the family but I uh, had to work so had to be here up here that's really the worst yeah I, I it's understandable man it's one of the drawbacks to being on the male side versus the female side the female side you can pick your days you work regardless um, the male side since we only have like, even right now, I believe yesterday we only had nine dudes. Yeah. We can't really afford to let everyone go. Yeah. You know, just like a normal job. So, it, it does make the holidays a little awkward. Yeah. And, you know, kudos to you for, for kind of sucking it up being this early, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about you, Logan? Um, for the strip-off, one of the things I was going to do with the guitars is I was going to put wine corks on it and light them on fire. Okay. So, on my way in, on the day of the competition, I stopped by Walmart to get some wine corks. Walmart doesn't sell wine corks, so I had to buy six bottles of wine, <laughs> came into the, the drawing late, I got stuck with drawing lot number one for the competition, oh. and come to find out the wine corks and the bottles were plastic, so they went light. Oh my god, that is, that is I mean... On the upside, everyone got to drink that wine. Yeah, people were happy. <laughs> that explained... Oh, okay, that That's makes why there were six bottles. I was wondering that. I was like, who does this for a strip off? But I got, I got you. Okay, it seemed like sense. a dirty play at first. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, uh, that's one of the reasons why I try to start as early as I can in preparation for stuff, because of that. But that that's pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty good. I can see where that could be extremely... Yeah. Uh, did you at least like the wine or no? The wine wasn't bad. I didn't drink too much of it, but everyone had some, yeah. and they enjoyed it. It kind of got so, them yeah. a little... A little buzz for the competition. So you were upset, but everyone else thought you were the coolest guy in the world. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well done. Um, luckily, my best event is a little bit quicker, but it still made me laugh. I laughed about it all day. So for the, the, the dance-off, I had I recently started taking formal classes for uh, aerial silks and rope. And so just politely threw the tickets out at my instructors and was like, hey, if you know anyone that wants to come out, it'd be awesome. You know, it's a good show. And a lot of them have never been, but in the circus world, everyone kind of supports each other's shows. So they ended up coming in full force with 12 people, <laughs> which were 12, 15 ladies, which was nerve wracking for me because half of them are instructors. And I'm like, oh, geez, I am like nowhere near like stage ready. But uh, so after the show, her and I, obviously, she had all kinds of questions and things to talk about next time we went to class or whatnot. And she, we were talking about the show and how to improve it because she does professional shows as well. And we got to the conversation where she was like, yeah, I kind of like the flow of things, but I really think you should start your show off with fire. It just is a good high energy thing and then you can kind of taper down. And I was like, I, that's something I have thought about before, but how do you think it would have the same impact if I did fire with my clothes on? Because I typically at least like to go shirtless for fire. And she was like, I completely forgot about that. I normally just pick a costume and that's the last I have to worry about it. But yeah, I guess you have to plan out when you're going to take clothes off. And so the conversation progresses a little bit more and she comes to the part of my underwear and she's like, she had a hard time saying underwear, but not because it was awkward, but she was like, well, it's not really underwear because that's all you guys wear. Like it's on the outside. So it's like outwear. Is it like, you know, and she came up with like three terms. And it, none of them really stuck. And then I looked at her. I was like, well, one of the more popular terms amongst the ladies, the guys don't really say it, is manties. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, like panties, but for men, like manties. 
and she absolutely lost it. Like, I mean, if you could picture someone like jumping up and down, clapping their hands, kicking yes. their feet, like that's how happy she was. I even think she like texted a couple of people like, you will not believe what word I learned today. <laughs> and like, it, it pretty much made my day. I thought it was hilarious. That's something that, like I said, we don't even say it, but some girl came up with it and it's kind of spread like wildfire in the club. And so I made her day that way. So that was pretty exciting for me. Not going to lie. Uh, how about you, Logan? Most of it? Yeah. Uh, definitely getting to work on the new act, taking it sta- uh, basically stage by stage, starting out solo and then just kind of adding people, fire, like all the elements to it, and then getting to see it come together. Yeah. That's not like, like an onion, adding layers and layers to it. Yeah, just not as, uh, well, I, I don't even remember the word for that, but yeah, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk, got it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Awesome. Hopefully it uh, lit a fire in you, uh, pun intended, I guess, to, to continue to build on that. Shows are evolving. Your show is definitely a big aspect of the business. If you want to keep it fresh for both the audience and yourself, uh, just realize that it takes time, mental effort, and uh, money. So just Yeah, keep that I, in I mind. know that. Yeah, he, six bottles of wine, probably even the cheap kind, probably adds up pretty quick, especially when you couldn't, weren't able to use them. <laughs> yeah, everyone had wine, though, so... Yeah. We were, we were having a good time. Uh, Zach, how about you, man? What was your best event of the week? I would say I got a customer who um, gets me gifts all the time. And uh, when I first started dancing, she got a lap dance mm-hmm. and was showing that she's going to get more, you know, mm-hmm. and, but hadn't for a long time. And then yesterday, uh, or it was either yesterday or the day before, she got another one. And she was like, she was like, why was that so much better than the first one? And I was like, maybe because we're, she was texting me. And I was like, maybe because we're more comfortable, you know, and mm-hmm. and the first one, you know, is probably always awkward. Oh, know? yeah. Nerves are on end. Yeah. Girls don't know what they expect, and, you know. And uh, and then I was like, and it was, you know, it was only the second time. And, and she was like, it's the second time I got a dance from you? She was like, I've, I've only gotten two dances from you since I've known you as a dancer. And I was like, yeah. And then she pretty much was like, well, that, I feel disappointed. I need to change that. Because she has been, you know, she'll bring me food and, you know, but she pretty much told me she's going to get more dances for me. Right on. Because she felt bad for not. Yeah, it's always good when you can earn that kind of appreciation and, like, fit and build that relationship with someone, you know. And you, you'll see it the longer you dance that they'll end up people that could totally make your night. Not only financially, just emotionally. Like, yeah, you'll have yeah. a bad night and the Even right lady will walk through those doors and you'll be like, you know what, I'm instantly in a good mood just seeing your smile. Yeah, so it's, re- it's really good when you start to see and build that. You know, first it's one, then it's two, then it's three. And before you know it, like when you can have someone like that in the club every night of the week, not necessarily the same person, but just people like that, that's when the job really becomes enjoyable for you yeah. versus just constantly talking to, you know, random people that may or may not respect you and stuff like that. Yeah, or point at your underwear and ask what it is. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Even, even as a waiter... You know, I would have those nights where, you know, I just really didn't want to be here. Mm-hmm. But then I would have some of my customers come in that, you know, I love to conversate with and just it made my day, made my night. Yeah. yeah, right on, man. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. All right, guys, I think we will call it a show because people are starting to walk in. Uh, so we uh, actually did great on time. So great job, guys. I really appreciate you guys being on the show, man. I know you guys kind of jumped at it uh, when I'm extended the invitation you guys so i really appreciate you guys doing that i hope our listeners definitely enjoyed no the insight seeing a different perspective of things because i mean it's been a long time since i was a new guy i remember some things but not everything and obviously the the job has changed very much in just the time i've been working so with that let's go ahead and give everyone your social media so they can figure out where to reach you if they uh so care to and of course you ladies can always hit us up at LaBear dallas in person talk to these guys they'll be on side stage but uh, as for me, you can catch me on YouTube at Caesar LaBear. Uh, my Instagram and Twitter are going to be Caesar LaBear7. On iTunes and SoundCloud, you can catch this fantastic podcast. You can share with your friends at Caesar the Crowd Pleaser. And lastly, all things involving Caesar the Crowd Pleaser at CaesarTheCrowdPleaser.com, which includes uh, the voting for my reality show, which is coming to a close. That's right. We had a slight delay on the last episode due to the international dance-off, but we are up to the final two. You don't know who got voted off yet because I showed that at the beginning of this upcoming show, so definitely stay tuned, but we will need your votes more than ever to decide a winner and who takes the grand prize cash home. So, Zach, where can people reach you at, brother? 
Uh, so Facebook, it would be Zach, Z-A-C-H, LaBear. And then Instagram would be Zach one LaBear, spelled the same way. Awesome. And Logan? Uh, they can reach me on my Instagram, Logan <laughs> underscore LaBear, or my Instagram, or that is my Instagram, uh, or my Snapchat, Paxton underscore Ranger. Right on. All right, guys. Well, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Appreciate being here, Caesar. Awesome. And until next time, keep bringing the rain. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. I am focused. I'm in my zone. You can binge watch like Game of Thrones. Reserve your judgments. Don't throw no stones. Who's in high scream as loud as you go? Airplane mode on tablets and phones. Caesar's crowd pleases. It's now on. Caesar, the crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar, the crowd pleaser. We gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believe us.